Suspense. Autolite and its 96,000 dealers present transcribed Mr. Alan Ladd in Motive for Murder, a suspense play produced and edited by William Spear. Remingchester, you look like a badly battered battery. A sorry sight indeed for an Autolite Stay Full battery man like me. Will Cox, I've just returned from a safari. Been hunting camels in Kilkenny. Camels in Kilkenny? Why, by St. Patty, didn't you know that the last camel in Kilkenny calmly curled up and died when the first Autolite Stay Full battery landed in Ireland? He knew he couldn't compare with that teetotaling dispenser of pep and power. The Autolite Stay Full battery, the battery that needs water only three times a year in normal camel, I mean car use. Uh, such shenanigans, Wilcox. <laughs> Remingchester, Autolite Stay Full batteries give 70% longer average life than batteries without Stay Full features. And that's proven by tests conducted according to SAE life cycle standards. By the Blarney Stone. And furthermore, Autolite Stay Full batteries have three times as much liquid reserve above the plates as batteries without stay full features. That's why they need water only three times a year in normal car use. Say no more, Wilcox. One thing more. You're always right with Autolite. And now with Motive for Murder and the performance of Alan Ladd, Autolite hopes once again to keep you in suspense. Irish, you'd ask me, how is a guy a cop? You make with magnifying glass and bloodhounds. You make with facts, I tell her. You start with something you know for sure. Yeah. Yeah, you make with facts. But when you're a cop and you've got all the facts, what do you do when they're going to arrest? Arrest your own wife for murder. Even the reporters were nice. They didn't try to steal a picture of Mary, though there were plenty of them around. But I knew what they were thinking about. The little guy with the mustache sitting in my chair wearing a knife between his ribs. And about Mary, my wife, lying over on the Davenport with a bourbon breath could use for a cutting torch. Jock Dusen was handling it. My pal for eight years. He was doing what he could for a brother officer and a friend. But I knew what would have to go into his report. You see, I've made out too many of them myself. All right, all right. Boys, wait out in the hall till the basket gets here. Go on, go on. Yeah, but, Lieutenant, I ain't finished dusting the place yet, now. Get out of the hall, please. All right, sure, sure. Um, Smoke, Dave? No, thanks, Jock. Well, she doesn't feel good. I'm going to ask you, Dave. You know who he is? Uh, No, I never saw him before in my life. His name's Hamilton, Victor Hamilton. How'd you find that out? Well, you sat there and watched me frisk him. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I... Guess I got some sawdust in my head. Seen a lot of dead guys, but not in my own place. Well, I just thought you might have known him, Dave, that's all. Funny you don't know the guy. Oh, look, Dave, I'm sorry about... I'm sorry it's your wife. Yeah, everybody's sorry. I can follow up the routine for an hour or two, maybe, but those guys from the DA. I know, office... I know. You're thinking of Second Avenue stuff. Spilled whiskey, broken glass, mere lipstick on dead man's cheek. She didn't kill him, Jock. Irish, oh. Irish. I feel funny. She's awake now. Oh. Hello, Angel. Oh, hi, Irish. You're home early. Give me a kiss. Hello, Mary. Jock. Irish. She's drunk. Or drugged. Uh, we'll find out later. All right, Jock. I'm sorry. It's all right. <sighs> Look, Angel. I want to ask you something. Hmm. Why was Hamilton here? Hamilton? We don't know anybody named Hamilton Irish. A little guy with a gray mustache. Uh, oh, oh, you mean the salesman. I ordered a vacuum cleaner. He had to give me a demonstration and cleaned the whole place. He was a funny little man. <laughs> I gave him a drink for doing all my work. <laughs> then what, honey? And then I... I felt this hurt in my head, and uh, I saw you and Jack. I don't feel right, Irish. Baby, uh, that set of knives in the kitchen. Um, Did you use a chef's knife for anything? No, no. You know those knives scare me. Yeah. Uh, that's all you can remember, Mary? That's uh, everything? Yes. What are you 
What's he doing, practicing cops on me? Well, look, honey, the landlady came over to borrow a book. She heard the radio, but you didn't answer the bell. She got worried and used the passkey. Irish, what is it? We got trouble. Somebody used that knife on Hamilton. Oh, Irish. Jock, what is this? Why, Mr. Hamilton's sitting right over there, right? Irish. Oh, no! Well, Dave, medic says that bruise on Mary's head is something she could have done on a chair arm or a door. Skin isn't broken, the swelling doesn't amount to much. So she was drunk and she fell down. Jock, you know she never took more than one drink. Let's hear the rest. Lab ran tests. Not finished yet. No sign of narcotic on her so far. Plenty of whiskey. Prints on the knife are hers. Well, why not? It was her knife in her kitchen. You're a cop, Dave. You can't beat the system. Everyone's leaned backward on this all down the line. Everything's been checked a dozen times. The system says she's guilty, Irish. You think she's guilty? Well, what I think doesn't count. It's facts. Hamilton sold vacuum cleaners. He had business cards in his pocket, but there was no order book at your house and no vacuum cleaner. Well, you can see what that does to her story about that demonstration. You, uh, you better send a lawyer down to Harbor Precinct. Not yet. I want to dig myself. Oh, I know what you're thinking. She was slugged or drugged or both, and there was a third party. That's right, there was a third party. He slugged Mary and shoved that knife in Hamilton. Then he poured whiskey down Mary's throat and painted lipstick on Hamilton's cheek. There has to be a third party. Dave, I know you're trying, but you can't disregard what we found. Look, I've been a cop a long time, Jock. I know a woman will shoot a man or stab him or poison him and then stand there and scream what a louse he is. But a man did this job, and I'm going to find him. We gave the neighborhood and the house the works, and we came up empty, Irish. Then you didn't look hard enough. I'm going to go take a look. Wait a minute, Dave. I can't put you on this. The newspapers are crucified. Because she's my wife? Because I might want to destroy evidence? Something like that. All right, here's the badge. I wouldn't want to get the department any bad publicity. Oh, now, Dave, please. David X. Murphy, detective, second grade. It says I'm a part of the system, a cop. Give it to the commissioner with my regards. Oh, no, wait. Here, take this back, Irish. As far as I'm concerned, you're hunting the guns that knocked off those service stations. <laughs> How could you ask questions without a badge, huh? Thanks, Chuck. Thanks a lot. There is a third party. Find him, Dave. Find him. There is. And I'll find him. You make with facts, I told you. The start was something you know for sure. I knew Mary hadn't killed Hamilton. For sure. Fact. Strangers seldom kill each other. 99 times out of 100, the killer knows the victim. Fact. Hamilton had been stabbed at my house where he came to demonstrate a vacuum cleaner. The vacuum cleaner wasn't in my house. Hamilton had been killed for that vacuum cleaner. Fact. A vacuum cleaner? Is that a motive for a murder? Yeah? Police, I want to talk to you. Ah, oh, the police have been here. Well, they're here again. Victor Hamlin had an apartment here, and you're his landlady. I want to know about him. You do, huh? What do you want to know? The work's good and bad. Did he drink, gamble? Did he stay in nights or go out? Did he pay his rent? Start talking and I'll listen. Oh, would I know so much about a tenant? I got my work to do. Yeah, no maid to keep me. Almost breaks my back sometimes. Yeah, yeah, come on, now tell me. Oh, he lived like a monk. Paid his bills and kept to himself. I never saw no friends with him. Go on. I can't tell you any more about him. What do you think I am? I... Uh, Harriet! Harriet, come here. Yeah? What is it? This is a policeman. He's asking me about Hamilton. I thought you could help him, maybe, huh? Oh, Bob Victor. You know him, miss? Yes. Yes, I knew him. I'm Harriet Blodgett. I live in this building, too. Do I get to go back to my house for you? Uh, yeah, thanks. Go on. Uh. Well, miss? I wish I could tell you something, but I can't. I just felt sorry for Victor. Uh, Mr. Hamilton. He was small and he had no car. He... He used to carry those cleaners all over the north end. Now and then I'd fix him something to eat and take it up to him. That all? Nothing like you, Ming. I guess he wasn't interested. It's no compliment to me. What do you do for a living? Hostess, Elgin Restaurant off Columbus Circle. Ever meet any of his friends? He was a 
lonely little man. No friends, no enemies. You're wrong. He had one enemy. The next morning, I was on the third floor of the Morgan building listening to a man named Richards, the sales manager of the vacuum cleaner company. Not house to house. Indeed, no. I'd like to have that absolutely clear. Our people work from lists supplied by us. We give them names of prospects, and they close the sale. And make a fortune. Uh, well, not exactly. Uh, take Hamilton, a bad back. Got pretty tired. Didn't have the old bounce, the old steam. A lot of sales got away. Bad back? War wound, maybe. I don't know. He didn't talk much. He got his demonstrator here every morning, huh? We assign cleaners to each salesman. Whenever they make a sale, they bring a deposit in and get another new machine. Do they make reports? Absolutely. Every call. Give me what Hamilton turned in yesterday. Hey, why, uh, oh, yes, of course. Of course. Here you are. Hamilton's last report. 4502 Van Buren. 4510 Van Buren. 4515 Van Buren. No house to house, huh? Oh, you kidding. No friends, only one enemy. On Van Buren Street. That's where my killer had to be. Somewhere on a street that had its feet in the bay and its head in the clouds. From pawn shops to snob apartments. The 4500 block was middle ground. Somewhere in that block, Hamilton had put his thumb on one doorbell too many. I started to the top of the list. Police. Oh, no. My Herman's a good boy. He took that bicycle back. He is a good boy. <laughs> yes, Mr. Hamilton was here demonstrating a vacuum cleaner. He cleaned all my rugs. I, I promised to keep him in mind. No, uh, no. Never let no strangers sell nothing inside of my place. No, never listen to what they got to say at all. Never. I went through 25 like that. 26 was bigger than the others. A half block of lawn, stained windows and brick. Built by one of yesterday's fortunes when Van Buren Street was young. There'll be money in it somewhere. Somehow, I said to myself. This was money. He was tall, slender and pretty. The mustache moved first. Please. My aunt's desperately ill. Police. Pol but Why? What do you want? We're checking. A little guy named of Hamilton came by here yesterday selling vacuum cleaners. He rang your doorbell with a lot of others. But he got himself killed. We uh, look into things like that. Oh. Whose house is this? Uh, my aunt, Cecilia Breckenbridge. That chap was here. Hamilton, was it? An impertinent little fellow. He rang the bell several times, woke my aunt. I sent him away. He didn't get inside? Oh, no, not past the door. That's funny. These salesmen make reports. They list every house where they make a demonstration. Your house is on that list. Oh, it's a mistake. I sent him away. Mm -hmm. He didn't make any mistakes about his other demonstrations. He didn't lie. A mistake? I... But right, if you want it that way, I'll check the neighborhood. People see things. I'll find someone who saw him in here. All right, all right. He, he was here inside. Then why the runaround? Well, my aunt, she's... Well, she's very old. It's my duty to spare her any unnecessary excitement. That's, that's why I lied. And anyway, there's nothing she could tell you. He was here. He made his little speech. He went away. Mm-hmm. But I've got a report to make out. I know, but couldn't you make an exception? It's an imposition calling on people, bothering them. But it's better than having a murderer walk the streets. My aunt is really quite ill. I can be very gentle. Oh, well, it's embarrassing. Do you know what a persecution complex is? I read about them. Well, that's her trouble. She's old, well, you know, senile. She thinks she's being kept a prisoner here. Oh? <laughs> she's right, of course. If she weren't confined here, she'd be confined to an institution... She doesn't understand why. She's outlived all her close friends, and she wonders why no one comes to see her. And that's why you let Hamilton and his vacuum cleaner in. Well, I thought it would help. Instead, he made it worse. I see. Are you, uh, Breckenbridge? Well, my name is Dolph. Harold Dolph, her sister's son. I'm her only relative. I keep the place going. You know how old people are about family homes. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Let's go and see her. All right. This way. Celia Breckenbridge was sitting in a rocking chair beside a window that looked out over the backyard. She was thin and small. And she looked up at me out of blue, tormented eyes. Don't tell her that he was killed. It'll upset her. Aunt Cecilia. Aunt Cecilia. It's a 
beautiful day, Harold. A lovely day. Aunt Cecilia, this man is here to ask a few questions about that vacuum cleaner salesman you saw the other day. Oh. Oh. Now be a good girl and answer him. It's... It's a lovely day, Harold. Mrs. Brackenbridge, I'd like to know what time he came in to see you. Hmm. Sometimes she'll talk, and sometimes she won't. Mrs. Brackenbridge, do you remember how long he stayed? The way her mind is, it's hard to tell what to expect. Do you remember what he did while he was here? Oh, oh it's a lovely day, Harold. A lovely day. <laughs> That you, Dave? Yeah, I'm in a drugstore at Van Buren and Hope. How's the coming out and give me a hand? What do you mean? I spotted that third party. He's tall and pretty, and he's scared to death. Autolite is bringing you Alan Ladd in Motive for Murder. Tonight's production in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Say, Reming Chester, were you in Limerick when you were hunting the Irish camel? Was I in Limerick? I invented the Limerick. Ah, but not this Limerick, old pal. Listen, a good name in Erin is Slattery. So's Autolite's stay-full battery. Its watery needs a teaspoon feeds. Only three times a year is no flattery. Alas, poor Limerick. I knew him well. Well, you know that the Autolite stay-full battery needs water only three times a year in normal car use. Why? Because it has three times as much liquid reserve above the plates as batteries without stay-full features. Is it the leprechaun in you, Wilcox? Why, every leprechaun in Ireland knows that the Autolite stay-full battery has a fiberglass retaining mat protecting every positive plate. That keeps the power-producing material in place, you see. In recent tests based on SAE life cycle standards... The Autolite stay-full batteries gave 70% longer average life than batteries without stay-full features. And remember, Autolite stay-full batteries need water only three times a year in normal car use. Get an Autolite stay-full battery and be right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage our star, Alan Ladd, in Motive for Murder, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. start with something you know for sure, like the fact that Mary couldn't kill anyone. Then you go to people and you ask questions. You look for somebody who'll talk too much or not enough. Somebody like Harold Dolph in a big old-fashioned house in Van Buren Street. You meet his invalid aunt who only sits and dreams of 50 years ago. And you look at tall and pretty in his $30 shirt standing there. And you find out why he'd go out and kill a man named Hamilton and steal his vacuum cleaner. All right, Dave, you've told me what you walked into. Now, tell me why you think Harold Dolph's the one. Tried to cover up before I could ask anything about it. He lied once. Oh, cut it, man. I've questioned people, too. All right, but there's something wrong in that house, something wrong about him. He looked like he knew she wouldn't talk before I asked her questions. He explained she was ill, a little crazy. Suppose she isn't crazy, Jock. Suppose she's afraid of him. All right, Irish, suppose. Maybe he's keeping a prisoner there. Well, you said he admitted that much. She'd be in an institution otherwise. But really keeping a prisoner in there. Why, though? Why? Money, money, of course. Her money. He explained it. Her family had money, not his. You looked into that part? Oh, Jock, but I've seen his kind a hundred times. And gabardines that cost two fifty, standing around living off what another man worked hard for. Oh, it's a reach, Irish. A long reach. He's our man. I know it. He can stick around that house and torture that old lady by keeping her scared he could kill Hamilton. Sure, but where does Hamilton fit? I... Oh, I don't know, Jock. That old lady could tell me if I could talk to her. You could be awful wrong, Irish. I've been wrong before. All I want is a chance to talk to her without Dolph breathing down my neck. Yeah, yeah. If I'm wrong, okay. If I'm right, I want Dolph where we can make the pinch. He'll come out of there sometime. When he does, you trail a guy. I'll talk to the old lady. All right, Irish. Uh, hey, 
That him backing the roadster out of the carriage house? Hey, you're right. Check with the station anytime you get a chance. I'll do the same. Right, Irish. She couldn't answer the bell. I had to use my gun butt on the garden door. This time she wasn't humming. Just breathing slow, uneven. I lifted an eyelid and felt her pulse. Doped. Then I noticed her hands. Fine, long, delicately formed hands. But no rings. Yet marks that showed she'd worn rings most of her life. The pictures of her all over the place showed her wearing rings. Rings with big stones and old-fashioned settings. Money. I went from top to bottom then. Attic to basement, every room. No rings and no vacuum cleaner. Harbor Precinct. Eddie speaking. Jock Dusen checked in yet? Who's this? It's Dave. Oh, Irish. Yeah, Jock checked in. Well, give it to me. I followed your man downtown to the Morgan Building on 5th. Morgan Building? Yeah. Morgan Building? No house-to-house canvassing, only from lists. Hey, Irish, you all right? Yeah, thanks, Eddie. I'll call you back. Right. Oh, Eddie. Yeah, Dave? Send a car to 4698 Van Buren. There's an old lady down there doped. Name Cecilia Breckenbridge. Take care of her. Nephew's name, Harold Dolph. Don't let him get close. Got it. Mr. Richards left strict orders that he wasn't to be disturbed. All the salesmen were in for a big meeting today. Come on, and skip he... the act. Now, you can't go in there. I don't care if you are the police. You, you can't go... What is this, Elsie? I... I told him, Mr. Richards, but he wouldn't listen. I left strict orders that... Oh. Oh, it's you. Mr. Richards... Beta, you... sister. Now, see here. Such high-handed methods of entering a man's office... I'm a citizen of this city. And you're violating city ordinance 116, paragraph 5, code 2. You haven't got a peddler's license, and your boys are doing house to house. I distinctly told you we work from clients. That's not why I'm here. Tell me about the tall and pretty and the brown gabardines who came to see you a little while ago. Huh? Within the last hour, an officer from my division followed him this far. The tall man, uh, brown gabardines? Uh, But I. What do you want? Well, he just wanted to ask me about his vacuum cleaner. What about his vacuum cleaner? Well, he, uh, well, I had to tell him the same thing I explained to you this morning about how we handle our sales. What thing? Come on. But about a sale. When they make one, they bring the deposit money in and get a new machine to deliver to the customer. They can't sell a demonstrator. It's, it's used and worn. Is that all? Well, you see, he ordered a cleaner yesterday, and he said the salesman promised to deliver it, but he never got it. What salesman? He, he didn't know the salesman's name. He described him as a small man. Yes, a small man. All the man wanted really was a vacuum cleaner. My goodness, but he... he wanted was... something else. What? Well, he asked me for the address of that salesman. He said he wanted to talk to him about his vacuum cleaner that wasn't delivered. You gave the address to him? But I told you I don't know what salesman it is. It was just a little man, he said. So, so I remembered poor Hamilton. And I thought it might be... You told be... him where Hamilton lived? Uh, well, yes. Yes, I did. Did I do something wrong? Driving across town towards Hamilton's apartment, I kept thinking of Mary and her question about how a cop works. No miracles, no magnifying glass, no bloodhounds, honey. Just facts. Facts to find a killer. An old house built with one of yesterday's great fortunes, a fortune that dwindled down to a handful of wedding rings. Diamonds. Twenty or thirty thousand dollars worth of motive. Facts. A tall and pretty who was money hungry and liked expensive clothes and cars. Facts. A vacuum cleaner salesman apartment without a vacuum cleaner. Hey. You held out on me. What do you mean? You know how to throw that book at you? When I was here before, I went through Hamilton's apartment and there wasn't a vacuum cleaner there. But I never... Hamilton kept at least two cleaners here all the time. You kept still, hoping to grab one for free. But I never saw any... He didn't keep them in his place. He didn't want to lug them up three flights. He kept them somewhere on this floor. I didn't think you'd care. Where was it? The hall closet in back. He had a key. You'll give me yours now. And that's where I found the old lady's wedding rings. The sack on that demonstrator Hamilton used in her house. Facts. I had all of them now. And a minute later, I heard feet on the stairs. I left the cleaner sitting there in the hall and stepped back into the shadows and waited. Waited for my killer. Oh. Hello, sweetheart. I've been expecting you. 
We got business. Business? About your aunt's diamond rings. What are you talking about? Murder. Murder? An old lady waiting to die, and you've been helping her with dope. Well, that's ridiculous. That's why you never let anybody in to see her. But you wanted some fun yesterday. Jokes. And you let out... Vacuum cleaner salesman named Hamilton come in and visit her. Now, see here, really. But as this... sick and as doped as she was, your aunt figured out a way so you'd never get those rings. She beat you, Dolph. All right, you've got When you weren't story. looking, she took them off and threw them under the vacuum now, cleaner. Now, we can come to some understanding. She wouldn't talk. You remember the salesman? Trailed him all over town. And you found him at one place along the line, you stabbed him with a kitchen knife, sapped Mary, and did Mary? the covering up with a broken glass, lipstick, and liquor. Mary? My wife, brother, and it's what? my place. Oh, when I look. I can get you money. Ten, fifteen thousand dollars. Thanks. If That's what think... I've been waiting for. Oh, please. He talked. Fact. Harold Dolph killed the salesman when he opened the cleaner and didn't find the rings. He didn't know that Hamilton had stopped off at his own place, where he left the demonstrator with the rings in the sack and picked up the new one he was delivering to Mary. Irish, how did you do it? With a magnifying glass and bloodhounds? You know, honey, you make with facts. You start with something you know for sure. The fact that my wife can't be a killer. You see, I love her too much. Suspense, presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Alan Ladd. Say, Wilcox, I've decided never to hunt Irish camels again, Bigori. Let me give you a tip, Reming Chester. You'll do better going for those Autolite Stay Full batteries and the more than 400 other products made by Autolite for cars, trucks, planes, and boats in 28 plants coast to coast. These include complete electrical systems used as original equipment on many makes of America's finest cars. Spark plugs, batteries, generators, coils, distributors, starting motors, bullseye sealed beam headlights. All engineered to fit together perfectly, work together perfectly because they're a perfect team. So, friends, don't accept electrical parts supposed to be as good. Ask for and insist on Autolite original factory parts at your neighborhood service station, car dealer, garage, or repair shop. Remember, you're always right with Autolite. Next Thursday for Suspense, our star will be Ronald Regan. The play is called One and One's a Lonesome. And it is, as we say... A tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense! Tonight's Suspense play was produced and edited by William Spear and directed and transcribed by Norman MacDonald. Music for Suspense is composed by Lucian Morawieck and conducted by Lud Bluskin. Motive for Murder was written by John and Ward Hawkins and adapted for radio by Jack Newman. Alan Ladd will soon be seen in the Paramount picture Captain Carey, USA. Don't forget, next Thursday, same time, Autolite will present Suspense, starring Ronald Regan. Stay full batteries, Autolite resistor or regular spark plugs, Autolite electrical parts at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Good night. This week marks the 38th birthday of the Girl Scouts. Autolite joins that celebration and sends its warmest greetings to more than a million Girl Scouts of the USA who today are learning to become the better citizens of tomorrow. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.